Hi. Hello again. We're in Genesis chapter 1, still in verse 3, but today we're going to actually cover 11 verses. Sure. Genesis 1, 3 to 13 from the NIV. Hi. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let the dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed, according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit and seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky. Oh, have I gone past? You've gone past, but oh, that's sorry. okay. Free bonus. <laughs> <laughs> We're just covering the first three days today. Okay. And uh, maybe put a plug in here since we're we're kind of uh, we're kind of neglectful when it comes to plugging the tools and the resources we have available. So some of the readings we're going to do today, the the commentaries are going to be in these notes, which some of you already have. There's a whole sequence of Genesis notes from which we're working, and this particular study, study three is called the Creator Revealed as Elohim. Mm -hmm. We'll touch on that today, but more of that in a couple of uh, videos from now. But this section is called the God of Purpose. And, and you can't help but see as you look at this first page of the Bible that there's, there's patterns here. And the patterns imply purpose. And, and actually the purpose is clearly stated if you just pay attention to the text. So, for instance, the first thing you notice, the, the, the divine names themselves. We've already made the point that there's only one name in the first three verses, and that's the word God. Hebrew Hebrew word Elohim, translated God, mm -hmm. but it's a literal plural. Mm -hmm. There is one fluctuation, which we saw in verse 2, which is the Spirit of God, still not a second name, but a, a distinction within God. Mm -hmm. And now you have, if you go all the way to verse 13, altogether now 14 uses of the word Elohim mm -hmm. and only the word Elohim and you have to make something of that S certainly if you're coming from a Jehovah's Witness background you do what's the point of the name being singular here and we'll see the pattern goes on through the rest of the chapter mm -hmm. but beyond the the recurrence of this name 14 times in 13 verses with just that single fluctuation the Spirit of God in verse 2 you have other patterns which are noted by some of the commentaries Alan P. Ross for instance in the Bible knowledge commentary says the pattern for each of the days of creation is established here there is a the creative word B the report of its effect C God's evaluation of it as good D at times the sovereign naming that's not uniform but it's there sometimes and E, the numbering of each day. So five recurring patterns in addition to the one we've already noted, mm -hmm. the singular divine name. Mm -hmm. Then we have the comments of two of the greatest comment commentators on Genesis. They are Gerhard von Rad and Nahum Sarna. Mm -hmm. Let's read what von Rad has to say. 
To the previous statements about creation, essential distinction from God, belonging to God, must now be added as the third, a declaration of value. The creature brought into existence is tov, or good. The word contains less an aesthetic judgment than a designation of purpose and correspondence. It corresponds, therefore, through though with much more restraint to the content of Psalm 104, verse 31. Psalm 104 tells not so much of the beauty as of the marvelous purpose and order of creation. But in the ancient oriental view, the act of giving a name meant, above all, the exercise of a sovereign right. Thus the naming of this and all subsequent creative works once more expresses graphically God's claim of lordship over the creatures. Well, we wouldn't notice that as witnesses, would we? The, mm -hmm. When you name something, you're not just giving it a, a brand or a uh, designation, a mm -hmm. tag. You're claiming ownership of it, the, mm -hmm. the fact that you name it. So this will become even more significant when we get to chapter 2 and we see that God gives Adam the task of naming all of the animals. Mm -hmm. So it expresses Adam's lordship over the creation under him. And therefore the implication is that without his lordship, the creation will go to chaos. It will not exhibit pattern and order. Mm -hmm. Then there's Nahum Sarna, who I don't think we've talked about yet in this series. Understanding Genesis, Nahum Sarna was the foremost Jewish expositor of Genesis about a generation ago. In his commentary on Understanding Genesis, the subhead, by the way, is the heritage of biblical Israel. Nahum Sarna at the time was Professor of Biblical Studies and Chairman of the Department of Near Eastern and Judaic Studies at Brandeis University. Yeah. And Sarna says about this something that we who take the Bible literally ought to think seriously about. Sarna says literalism involves a fundamental misconception of the mental processes of biblical man and ignorance of his modes of self-expression. Biblical man, despite his undoubted intellectual and spiritual endowments, did not base his views on, of the universe and its laws on the critical use of empirical data. He had not as yet discovered the principles and methods of disciplined inquiry, critical observation, or analytical experimentation. In other words, he, he wasn't scientific. This, mm -hmm. is, this is all written a thousand years before the birth of, of science. Anything we'd recognize as science. So Sarna goes on, rather his thinking was imaginative and his expressions of thought were concrete, pictorial, emotional, and poetic. Hence it is a naive and futile exercise to attempt to reconcile the biblical accounts of creation with the findings of modern science. Mm. Any correspondence which can be discovered or ingeniously established between the two must surely be nothing more than mere coincidence. Even more serious than the inherent fundamental misconception of the psychology of biblical man is the unwholesome effect upon the understanding of the Bible itself. For the net result is self-defeating. The literalistic approach serves to direct attention to those aspects of the narrative that reflect the time and place of its composition, mm -hmm. while it tends to obscure the elements that are meaningful and enduring, thus distorting the biblical message and destroying its relevancy. Mm. So they're pre-scientific men so their approach would be different and it, th that is a mistake I think we we often make is that we don't uh, we we look at things only from the eyes of our time mm. so the ancient man the the men who first read the book of Genesis and read it for another thousand years or more after mm -hmm. were not looking for chronology and they weren't looking for a theory of the beginning of the world they were looking for the differences between their gods their gods attributes and the gods of the pagan nations mm -hmm. so even even the word tov that you bore reference to yeah. garban rad gave brought to our attention the word good here what is that but a statement that the creation has a purpose mm -hmm. creation is not chaos mm -hmm. whereas the pagan myths that that many of the jews would have heard before they they mm -hmm. had the book of genesis 
the pagan myths, whether you're in Babylon or in Egypt or in Canaan, are all about a war going on between the gods and the elements. Mm. And there's there's no sense of an ongoing purpose that unfolds because of the yeah. the, the uh, omnipotent and omniscient will of a benevolent creator. You have a war that's perpetual in the, most of the pagan mythologies. Mm. So the you said good would designate that it it had a purpose. It had a suit. It was it was fulfilling a suitable purpose mm -hmm. for why it was created, and that would be different, I guess, in the in the other writings. And there's one God that's in control of all of this. He's not mm -hmm. lost control of it because we have stepped out of our role as lords. Mm -hmm. That's all packed into this one chapter of Genesis, and we would never have noticed that no. when we were witnesses. We would fight the same battles as the fundamentalists that Sarna is objecting to mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. which is it's about how long the earth has been around and how long it took to create it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's because we never learned that you should take into account the audience, the original audience, mm -hmm. and their understanding, their capabilities. Their, their concerns Yeah, were not our concerns. Mm -hmm. We wanted to link to uh, the Divine Names, Five Steps Up from Paganism, a series we did a couple of years ago. Again, with Jehovah's Witnesses in mind, because you're so obsessed with this, with one name out of the Old Testament that you forget that there's a, a chronological sequence to the, even the revelation of those names. So that series d details the the development of the understanding of the divine names throughout even the Old Testament and right into the New. Mm -hmm. And then also a, a link to a, a contrast we did between the pagan accounts of creation mm -hmm. and this. And that's called the, the Babylonian Genesis based on the work of a great writer and historian of religion called Alexander Heidel. Hmm. Uh, also put a plug in for the PDF, so if you do want to receive the notes as we go through them, yeah, just, send us an email. Yeah, so we'll put a, a PDF uh, in the description, uh, uh, a link to our uh, email address. See you next time.